Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. Uh, this video I'm going to um, try to show you how you can maybe save a picture that perhaps you thought just was not good enough. So uh, this, this image I took eight years ago in Louvre on a, on a workshop with Serge Ramnelli. And uh, we had a fabulous week, I must admit. But uh, I was still really learning how to how to shoot, what settings to run at, and uh, you know, it's try a bit underexposed here. Uh, certainly, the shadow is very underexposed. So what I'm going to try to do is show you that actually you can go back a little bit in time, pick up on some of the images that you took in the past, and 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 then look to give them a new lease of life. So what I'm going to do with this this image is I'm going to um, obviously sort out the exposure. I'm going to do a sky replacement. I'm going to take the people out of the scene and, and maybe do a little bit of day tonight with these lanterns uh, so it looks starts to look a little bit more realistic. So can we turn this this image, which is really a lost image, if, if, if you came home, you saw that, you thought, wow. But because you shot in RAW, you have the opportunity uh, to try to save it and turn it into something a little bit more interesting. So um, also what I'm going to do this this time round, I've had a number of people ask if I could share the uh, raw image so that people could follow along with 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 my tutorials. Um, so in in the description below, you'll find a link uh, where you'll be able to download the the raw file and uh, and and follow along. All I'd ask is that you please respect um, the copyright and not use the image for for any. Uh, any commercial purposes or, or or declaring it as your own image that would be fine um so if you do if you do want to show it on uh, social media just please make a mention to jamie photography i would be delighted thank you very much so let's get started with this image so first thing i always do in my workflow is sort out perspective and cropping just to make sure that i'm happy with it and you can see there's somebody in the scene there if i just brighten up the image there you can see that there was another photographer below us I was stood up on the ledge so I'm just I'm not going to brighten it too much at the moment I'm just going to bring it up a little bit one stop and I'm going to go straight into the crop tool um, sorry not the crop tool I'm going to go straight into perspective so I'm going to go down to transform I'm going to click auto see if that corrects things it's not too bad it's leaning in a little bit from the from the left so I'm going to go to guided instead I'm going to take the edge of this pillar as one reference Going to take the edge of this pillar here as the other reference there we go and that should straighten the scene up that's not too bad i want to perhaps cause it to lean slightly outwards just a little bit so i can move the bottom over just slightly there we go so um yeah i'm pretty happy with that so i need to get the, the horizontal sorted as well so um we need to pick a point where we think we can try to grab a horizontal it's probably going to be somewhere around there. There we go. So those three lines in guided help me just find find a level. We can fine tune it again in a, in a, in a second. So I'm just going to go into the crop tool now, um, and then we're just going to crop. We're just going to come in on the edge of that pillar there. I'm going to come up from the bottom, take the photographer out the bottom there, just like that, um, and just a little tiny bit on the right hand side. So. Um, Bring top down just a widge just to, to get rid of this this detail at the top right corner now let's just see whether it can be a standard size a 16 by 10 that's a 16 by 10 or a 16 by 9 that gives us a little bit more just come back there yeah that seems to work quite well so i'm going to go with that so i'll hit return to accept that so there we go we've got our perspective sorted and we've got our crop sorted so um i think what we do need to do is probably tidy up the um the people and the objects that are in the uh in the middle here so to do that i'm just going <clears> to <throat> brighten it up just a little bit more um and just open up the shadows um i'm going to bring them up to about 70 you don't want to go too far because it starts to look a little bit um sort of not not real really if, if we go too far so just brighten up a little bit and i'm just gonna add a bit of color in as well just to bring the temp up just to bring because that blue hour was 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 really pushing so there we go we brought that up as well so 
let's um, let's jump over into um, just putting up the brightness from my end so I can see. I'm just going to go over into Photoshop. So I right click on the image, go to Edit In, go to Edit In Adobe Photoshop 2023. I'll just let that. There we go. It's changed over. We're going to zoom in. Now we can use the magnifying glass tool here, the zoom tool Z. Um, or you can just hold down the option or alt key on a windows and wheelie your mouse and you can move in and out quite well space bar held down left key that allows you to move it move it over so there's quite a bit of information here we're going to have to try to deal with so i'm going to go to my one of my favorite tools in uh, in photoshop which is spot healing brush tool you can click j or, or click on that and and i'm just going to <clears throat> Take the brush a little bit smaller because I want to just just paint round the images and make sure you fill in the centers as you go round. Some people try to have a big brush and, and, and do it all in one one hit. And I find that the content aware tool doesn't really cope very well uh, with that. So there is a lot of people's feet here. So obviously with a timed ex exposure, somebody was walking there. I might try to just uh, take that out like so. Yeah, that didn't do too bad. Straighten that edge, there we go. Same in the middle there, just to take out those feet. Ah, that brought that up, that little bit over there. So instead I'm gonna just go over to the um, the, the clone stamp tool and take a slightly smaller brush. I'm gonna press the Alt or Option key over here and click once with the left key. And that gives me a, a stamp that I can then use to just paint through these areas just to get rid of those extra little feet marks. That's good. There we go. Back to the back to the healing tool just to take out this lady here and maybe this bin in one go. Let's see if we can do that. Almost. There we go. And these people so we're just going to work around just just going over the edge you can see I overhang ever so slightly just so that the content aware has something to work with uh, when it's trying to compute how to fill that that space that we've got space bar left left button just to sorry uh, space bar and the left mouse button to move images around and uh, just uh, just seeing how it copes with uh, taking out these over here. It's not doing particularly well. Normally, it would it, it can it can deal with these sort of things really easily, but it's just duplicating itself. So uh, we'll come down to the. Um, healing brush tool which is a sort of halfway between the stamp tool and uh and the healing the healing tool and you you do it the same way as the stamp the stamp tool you take a you take an impression you then move to a new position and it uh, and it works on it so for example here i can take a stamp to the to the right and then i can paint around and just get rid, rid of the, that lady there. Same here, I can take a stamp from down here and I can just paint that in. Right. Now I could go, there's a lot to do here, so I'm just gonna just go back to the stamp tool here just to try to work our way through and get these, these people done. Last little bit there, and um, just get rid of those people there. Again, I'm just going to drop back to the stamp tool there, just to get that bit done. Right, that's good. Just want to take out the um, the uh, the eye, the Paris eye there, just to it's a little bit distracting so again I'm just going to paint around there that's it and it should take that away there we go I'm also going to just take out these bright traffic light pedestrian crossings because they again they can be quite distracting that's good 
Right, oh, one more bin there, look. Very good. Just want to uh, tidy this up over here. I think we've got ourselves, let's zoom back out. It's looking better. There's a couple of patches there you see that are a little bit distracting. So again, we, use, we can use the stamp tool to just work our way through those areas just to remove the distraction where there's sort of dark colors. So you can see I'm taking a stamp and then just working my way backwards and forwards just to blend any any areas that just don't look quite right. There we go. I think that's pretty good. So whilst we're here in Photoshop, we can also do the sky replacement as well. So um, I uh, just whilst I'm here, I just want to take out this little bit of grass down the bottom here. Just a little. A little bit of green grass there, just uh, there we go. Um, now, normally, if I had a little bit more time, I'd certainly take out this bin and um, and 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 put put the balls back in by copying balls further down and putting them in there. But I'm not going to do that for now because that that takes about 10, 15 minutes with uh, uh, with it with, just to do on its own. So uh, I'll show you that in another video how to remove things such as the bins. So I'm just going to take out these lightning can conductors on top of the building so um, that's good right so sky replacement whilst we're here in Photoshop we're going to go to edit we're going to go down to sky replacement now um, if you want to pick a sky um, you can just use this little uh, down arrow here and that will bring up the skies that come with Photoshop and I've also got a number of skies here that I've loaded in myself if you have your own skies and you'd like to put them in, or you've bought uh, a sky pack from 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 one of the online um, YouTubers who who do some wonderful skies, Serge Ramonelli skies particularly are very very good. You can just use this little positive button here, and what that will do is that will take you in to your files, and then you'll be able to go through and uh, find where you've put your skies, and then you can load when your skies up. But I'm actually going to use this sky here. This is actually one of my own skies. Um, and I'm uh, just going to move that over out of the way a little bit just for a second, just so we can see how the sky looks. So now you can move the sky just by grabbing it and moving it about so you can find, you know, where the, the best colours are. I mean, that looks really lovely like that. So I'm just going to drop that in there. Um, the edge is a little bit of a halo on the edge here. So we, we can use the fade edge tool to to reduce that. Um, if you go too far one way, you get a bigger halo, you see. If you go too far the other way, you get a, a, a quite a black edge to that. Um, so I'll just bring that back just a little bit. And the shift edge as well, you can, that, that obviously opens the edge up. If you've got like a mist going away into the distance, then the shift edge is really good for blending the sky into a misty distance. Where you have a hard edge like a building, and you can see here that it's a bit halo-y, we, we go, we can go the other way and put much harder edge in. If we go too far, the the sky actually cuts into the building. You can see that. So we don't we want to try to find the balance point between the two. So which I think is probably around about there. Then you've got your brightness. So we can make the sky a little bit darker or a little bit brighter. So in this case, I'm going to go probably around go too bright. So I'm going to probably go around about there. 18, 19, and then the color, we can obviously add a little bit more orange to the sky if we want to, or we can go more blue if we want to. And in this case, I actually think, because we had a sort of blue image to start with, we actually want to go with a bluer tinge. That's probably a bit much. Um, so I'm gonna come in probably around about minus 30. I think that works quite well. It's sort of the colors of the building and the and the, and the, and the pyramid itself is, is quite nice color. But what, oops, what we do need to do is, I'm just going to come up into the sky replacement module here, is we need to look at the, the lower sliders. And um, there's also an option. You can click flip and you can move it from one side to the other if you prefer. You can do that. That works quite well. So I'm going to leave it over that side. Um, we've got foreground lighting. The foreground lighting accounts for the, the amount of light that comes either from the sky 
onto the buildings or darker. So if you can see that the buildings are dark, if I go foreground high, these are darker. And if I go foreground low number, you can see these are much lighter. So you've got to find that balance between what looks looks natural. And I think I'm going to go around about 40. Edge lighting. Again, if, if, if you play with the edge lighting, it deals with the, the, the light along the edges where you've got the joining contrast. So if I go far left, you can see the pyramid here is lighter. And if I go far right, you can see that that gets a little bit of tone from the sky, which actually looks quite nice. So I'm going to probably set that to about 80. And the last one you've got is color adjustment. And what this does is it, it takes the color from the sky and it moves it into the foreground. So I can either go uh, no, no color where we were previously, or I can put a lot of the sky color into the foreground. And actually, I want to do that to get a balance there. So I'm actually just going to go at 100 for that. And once you once you're there, I think you can just be sure that you you're happy with the colors. Um, you do have a refine edge tool which you can use. Um, if I if I take a slightly bigger brush, you can run along the edge of the building just to fill in if you feel that you want a bit more um, of an edge drawn in as such. So you can use the refine edge tool just to to bring that edge in. And then when you're finished. You can go with new layers. If you go with new layers, when you export this back in from the sky replacement module back into Photoshop, it will give you a layer for every element of the of the sky replacement. It's about um, six or seven layers with, with adjustment tools to go with it. So you can also fine tune it if you want to. I tend to just go with a duplicate layer so it all comes in on a single layer. So then you click OK and you'll see that the there we are before we put the sky replacement in and after we put the sky replacement in. So uh, I don't particularly need the background shot anymore. So I can undo the padlock there. So it turns to layer zero. I don't really need that. So I'm going to just uh, right click on that image there and uh, sorry on the um, on the layer. Sorry. And uh, I'm going to duplicate that layer. I don't need that at the moment. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to throw this back into Lightroom. And to do that, you go to file, close save okay you don't go to file save as uh, because if you do that you have to find the folder and then put it back into the folder uh, and then you have to resynchronize the folder to find it again as you can see here it's come back into lightroom so um so as you can see it was a four second exposure that's why we had some blurred people f16 bit too high it should have gone maybe with f11 um and iso 50 trying to get as long uh, a time as i could and the four seconds. So you could use an ND filter if you wanted to, uh, and that would you could extend it out to thirty seconds, and that may have helped better with the with the people. So um, so let's let's get the the last part of this sort of bring it back to life um, tutorial for this image. So so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to uh, masks up here in the top right corner. Click masks. I'm going to select a linear gradient and I'm just going to bring in a gradient from the uh, from the right to the left with quite a lot of 100% at the top. And if you've ever thought what these lines are, well, you've got the top line, which is the red, is 100%. So anything behind that gets 100% of whatever it is you do. If I move the slider down to minus two stops, then above that line, you get minus two stops. From the red dot to the white dot goes from 100% to zero. So it then fades away as you cross that gradient there. So two stops up there, as you can see, and then no stops here. And that, that's how it applies it. So it's probably a bit much. I'm just going to back that off just a little bit to about one and a half stops. I'm going to add a little bit more temp to this side of the sky. So I'm going to actually add some blue, more a little bit more blue there. Not too much. A little bit of magenta. And I'm just going to move that line up a little bit so that we get the majority of this color over here, but we've got the blue over here. So the color, the color circle opposite of blue is oranges and yellows. So we want to try and sort of bring those colors in. I could even turn that a little bit more just to make that work. So that, that that's working quite well, but I don't want it on the buildings. So what I can do is I can, um, within this mask, I can, what I like to do is is to just subtract the sky and then click invert. So it's the opposite of the sky. I like to do that quite often. You can intersect the gradient 
uh, with the sky. That's another option that you can do. And to do that, you go to the sky three dots and you intersect with uh, with the sky. You can you can do that as well. That's the same. That's the same thing. Um, so that's fine. So so the top's looking pretty good. Uh, the bottom here, I need to do a little bit more with uh, with the lighting to give us a bit more foreground. It's a bit dull here in the foreground at the moment. So I'm going to create a new mask. I'm going to go to the linear gradient. I'm going to pick it up from the bottom left corner and sweep it up across the scene there. And I'm just going to add some a little bit more color in there, a little bit more magenta just like that just to just turn that a little bit more so we've got a little bit more color down there good so now we really need to bring this alive down the bottom here so what i what i'm going to do is i'm going to light these lanterns uh, now there's a lot of lanterns here so i'm not going to do them all for you here today um, but what i will do is do these sort of first three or four um, and show you how we can add some detail into this foreground here so i'm going to go to create a mask Go to my favorite tool of all radio radial gradient and i'm just going to pop in a radial gradient that's bigger than the lamp itself like like so and i'm going to bring up the exposure okay so i'm going to bring that up to maximum i'm going to bring some yellow into it a little bit of magenta just to balance the color now i'm going to zoom in so let me just go to 200 using the space bar to move so there's a little bit of noise there because we've boosted that so we can whilst we're in this this uh, mask we can go down to the noise slider and just increase the noise slider it just takes a little bit away and add a little bit of sharpness just to bring that back now we just want the lantern illuminated so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract from this mask the brush and then with that brush we're going to select um, in the settings for this uh, zero feather 100 percent flow and take a little bit of a bigger brush now you can make it bigger or smaller using your wheelie on your mouse or you can use the um, square brackets next to the return key to to actually make it bigger or smaller so i'm going to take it roughly that size i'm going to come in on the edge of it i'm going to click once so we're removing the radial gradient yeah and then i'm going to hold down the shift key line up at the top here and click again and it will draw a nice straight line using the uh, the shift key and then i'm going to do the same coming across here just going to bring that through so I'm, I'm i'm holding down the shift key and just adding uh more as we go so so shift click shift click yeah uh, make the brush a little bit bigger and i'm just going to take out the rest of this um radial gradient as we go around if you think you've got it all it may look like you've got it all just hover over the mask right over the brush there you go you can see what you've got with the brush and if you hover over the radial gradient you can see uh, where we are so the mask itself should show that there's nothing a little bit up here so i'm just going to uh just go back over that up there a little bit that's it that's looking pretty good so if we zoom back out you can see that's relatively easy to do so now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to right click, actually before I do that, I just need to get that line there. So I'm going to take a smaller brush, we're still in the brush, and just take a little tiny brush and just paint that line here. You can see from there to there, just put a nice hard edge on that, on that lantern there. Okay, we're going to go back out to 100. We're going to right click, we're going to duplicate the mask. Okay, so that means that we end up keeping uh, the information that's there. Um, and then what I'm going to do is this new one I've created, I'm going to make much smaller. So it's in fact the, lant the lantern inside the light itself. So make sure it's central. So if I just come out of master a second there, you can see that gives us really quite a, quite an, uh, a realistic look for the lamp. So I'm just going to fly over here and, um, I'm going to do another, um, Another mask here, radial gradient. Take a radial gradient that's slightly bigger than the, the lamp itself. Boost exposure. This is a little bit further away, this lamp, so I'm not going to go quite so much. So at 0.36, going to add in a little bit of temp and a little bit of magenta just to get that balance of color. We're going to zoom in again onto this lamp. You see all these lamps in the distance. If we were really going to do this job properly, we would work our way through all of those. 
So, um, so we're just going to add in that noise reduction, a little bit of sharpness. We're going to uh, subtract a brush and uh, I'm going to take a little brush down. As we did before, I'm going to click, shift, click. And once you get the hang of this, you, um, you find that you're actually able to move quite quickly uh, around, around these images. So I'm clicking and then shift clicking as we go around. So let me just take the rest of that one out. That's very good. I'm going to right click, duplicate the mask. We're going to make this one smaller for the lamp as we did previously. There we go. So that's that one done. We're going to cross over to this one. Now you can actually see the lamp there, look, this time round. So actually you can see the wire inside. Um, I don't know whether we're able to uh, try and remove that. Let's just go to uh, to heal. Let's take a little, br a little brush, a little uh, healing tool there and just see if we can uh, take that out. No, that doesn't work. Uh, maybe a smaller brush still, a little bit less feather. I don't think that's gonna gonna work. Well, that'll have to do. So we're going back into the mask, radial gradient. So radial gradient bigger than the actual lamp itself, remember. We'll bring up the exposure. This one's about roughly the same brightness, so it's pretty close. Add in a bit of color, a little bit of magenta, just to balance it off. Um, we're going to go down and correct the noise and a little bit of sharpness. That works okay. And then we're going to subtract a brush as we did before. We're going to come in on that edge there, click once, shift, click again, click, shift, click, shift, click, just to work your way around, click, shift, click, click, shift, click. There we go. Make the brush bigger. Let's take the rest of it away. So all we've got is the actual lamp itself. And then I'm going to click on the, the radial gradient, duplicate the mask. Click again to make it smaller, so it's the size of the lamp. There you go, and we'll put it where the lamp is. That's it, that's good. And then maybe just this last one over here, create a mask, radial gradient. There we go. Bring this up a little bit darker because it's a little bit further away. So 3.6, bit of color, bit of magenta. And as always, a little bit of noise correction, just, just to be sure. And then we're going to subtract the brush, smaller brush, not too big. So click, shift, click, just to get along that edge. Click, shift, click, shift, click, click, shift, click. Actually, I'm going to go back slightly. So Command or Control Z to just undo. We're just going to come in on that edge there because a little bit of glass showing along the edge. And... Uh, just come across the bottom there. Bigger brush, just to take the rest of it away. There we go. Remember, highlight the, the with the left click, then go to right click, duplicate mask, left click again on it, just to bring that. There we go. I'm just going to make that second one just a little bit darker, not too much. There we go. So you can see it. Great. Right, so I'm going to zoom back. So you can see, I've just come away from those for a minute. You can see that they're illuminated now. And I would work my way down these and do them all and the ones over the far side. But the real trick to making day to night work with lanterns is you must put the light on the ground in a way that works. Uh, now, let me show you how not to do it. So we create a mask, radial gradient. Quite often people will put um, relatively small puddle round of light round the bottom with the oval staying just left to right and then they will boost the exposure and they'll say yeah I'm happy with that. Now that's not too bad but you've got to think about the way in which the lantern itself is lighting and you can see 
that it's pointing out at this angle and it's pointing out at that angle. So we need to adjust this, this, this radial gradient slightly so that we get the same effect. So the light's coming this way, so the light's going that way. So just need to take it off angle. I'm going to take it much further than you'd think, right? Because that does actually create quite a large pool of light there. I'm just going to add in a little bit of yellow just to get that, that little bit in the, using the temp and a little bit of magenta just to balance it off so you lose the greenness of, of, of the image. So that looks that looks better. It's a bit bright, a little bit bright. So I'm just going to bracket it off just a little bit. But the real the, the the real slider that works here for day to night is always when you're on this radial gradient here, is you go down to clarity, okay? And I mean chuck in some clarity. So I'm going to go, you know, like sixty. I'm going to put clarity in, and what it does is it gives you that 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 sort of sense of light, the harshness that you get from light. But also just to just to help it on its way, just a little bit of contrast as well. And you'll find that you get quite a nice effect. In fact, I'm just going to rotate that slightly, slightly more. There we go. So that works really, really well. I'm just going to right click that and I'm going to um, just duplicate that that one again and just take this over here to this one. And uh, I'm just going to same thing, I'm just going to find that angle that the light would light from. So. Um, it's sort of up like that. Just going to make it a little bit smaller. So it's lighting this area here. That's pretty good. I'm going to right click again. I'm going to duplicate that radial gradient as well. I'm going to pop it over here onto this one. And I'm just going to make that one go out into the square a little bit more, a little bit narrower, just to bring that, that contrast up. So I'm just going to bring them all down slightly. Now this one, I don't want to light up the column here, right? So on this one, I'm going to subtract a brush. I'm just going to take a brush here. I'm just going to click up there and then shift click there and just making the brush so it fits within. There we go, just that area there. I'm just paint that out. Just take that edge off there. And you can see that that's now not illuminated by the lights. So that, that's the sort of way, I think one more over here. I'm just gonna create a new one for that one because it'll be a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna pop in one for that one as well. Again, just find that angle that works. Bring up the exposure, not too bright. Can you see the difference in color now I've, between not having added any temp or tint? There, you can you see that? It's almost blue. So we'll put that color back in. A little bit of magenta back into that just to find that balance. There we go. A little bit darker because it's a little bit further away. I might even just pull it out a little bit further just, just to give it a feeling for the light there, which is working very, very well. So, so that's our day to night sorted. We just need to do some final adjustments just to make the image pop. So in the main, so I've closed the mask, we're back in the basic tool here. Um, we can bring up a little bit more yellow, not too much, probably about plus five, a little bit more magenta, another plus five on that. I'm gonna have a look at what the highlights can do. I could bring the highlights down a little bit. I'm not gonna come down too far, maybe minus 20. I'm gonna open up the shadows just a little bit more. That works okay. And then I'm gonna check my whites. So to check your whites, hold down the option or alt key. And then holding it down, you can move that back and forth. You can see the lamps themselves are really bright. Now I'm okay with the center of the lamps being bright. So I'm gonna go there at uh, about plus 10. And then the blacks, holding down the optional alt key, move the black slider to you get a little bit of black showing. There we go. And that gives us the real contrast for the image. I'm just gonna bring the whole exposure up slightly. And I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast so coming up to 0.5 on exposure about 20 on uh, contrast bring those highlights down just a little bit more to minus 40 just just sort of feeling it out a little bit try a little bit of clarity so i'm just going to bring a little bit of clarity in not too much for the whole image it can certainly overdo things and i'm going to bring a little tiny bit plus five on texture, just gives the image a little bit of bite. So vibrance, always worth a little bit of vibrance just to make an image pop just a little bit. I'm gonna back the saturation off minus five, and then just trying to find that balance really 
of where we are over here. This this area here is is lost a little bit of clarity there. So what we can do is we can uh, take a new mask, grab a brush, put feather at a hundred, flow at fifty. Okay, and then what we're going to do is add a little bit of contrast, and we're going to add some clarity. And what we're going to do is just brush over here, just to bring a little bit of detail back in the building. Just build on that over there. It just makes it look a little bit, a little bit better over there. And might even just to help that, just um, bring up the highlights just slightly. And that could that could work quite well. There we go. So I think the very last thing I want to do, this whole image just needs to be rotated slightly. So I'm just going into the crop tool. I'm just going to rotate it so the pyramid is straight. There we go. Hit return. Now I really want to bring this pyramid up. Last thing I want to do is boost the orange of this pyramid. So I'm going to go back into masks, create a new mask, radial gradient here. I'm going to take quite a large radial gradient and put it on this, put it on this pyramid. Oh, here we go. Let's get that on there. Just putting it on there. And then let's have a look at boosting that. So down here in the in the in the in the in the um a little bit extra exposure plus two nine bring up some contrast um i'm gonna a bit more orange and a bit more magenta makes it pop and then i'm just going to bring the saturation up a little bit more so it's really orange there we go and maybe some clarity as well now we don't want the surrounding area so Good old tool, we're in this radial gradient that we've got here. Subtract a brush and make the flow 100, the feather zero. We're gonna zoom in on the pyramid. Just coming a little bit closer. And we're just gonna go, we're gonna click, right? Take it down smaller here, because we'll get both these pyramids in. Click there as well. So we've just taken that edge off there. And then we're just gonna work around there we go. Just taking that uh, away from the edge. So click, shift click, just coming down through there. Just taking that away. There is a little bit of noise in the sky. So just before we finish off, we will do a little bit of noise reduction. So I'm just clicking, shift clicking just taking away the rest of that uh, radial gradient. Brush big. And I'm just gonna zoom out and check that brush. There's a little bit left around the outside, so just gonna go around the outside like that. And that, oh, a little bit over there. There we go. So it's just on the pyramids now. That's perfect. And now it's just on the pyramids. Of course, we we can we can do as we wish. We can you know we can we can just we can move move the sliders around and just just play with the um, just play with the the the, um, the pyramid itself. So just put a bit more clarity there. That's really good. So yeah, I think I'm just going to do that noise that we talked about. So just going to zoom into the sky. Here we go. A little bit of noise there. So we're going to go down to detail on the right. And in the noise reduction, we're going to take the luminance noise reduction slider. We're going to pull that over until the the noise effect is, is to a point where we're happier with it. So I think it's going to be about 60 there. Also, the contrast noise reduction you can bring that up a little bit. In fact, I'm probably not going to, probably about 10. And then the color slider, you see here, this is an older sensor, an older camera. You can see the color noise in there, you can see it. So we'll bring up the color slider there and you can see how it neutralizes that. Did you see that? I took that back there, put it to zero. There's the color noise. And you just bring this slider up until that's gone. So yeah, quite happy with that. But the real trick here is we need to restore the the overall sharpness of the image because we've now softened it by using the uh, noise reduction so this sharpening slider we can we can bring that up now little rule of thumb is if the whatever your luminance is 
you should subtract that from 100 and that would be what your sharpening should be. So if we need more noise reduction, we need less sharpening. So here we've got 60, so I'm going to put 40 in on sharpening. Now I've done that, you think, okay, that's looking really good, but you've got the masking tool in the sharpening section. And if you hold down the Alt or Option key on a Mac, um, you'll see that when you start sliding this, everything will go black and white. And anything that's black as you're coming up will be softened, will be effectively have the noise reduction added. And anything that's white will be sharpened. So you want to find the balance between, between the two. So I'm thinking probably around about 50, yeah, in the center. So when I let go, we now have the sharpening on all of the edges and all of the, the, the items, and then we have uh, the, the, the noise reduction on the sky and, and the outer area. I mean, in fact, I'm going to reduce that masking down because it's quite visible there to about 35. And you know what? Yeah, if, if I had a little bit more time with you now, I'd take you through the rest of those lanterns. Feel free to do that yourself. And, and, and do the lighting on there. And also there are some lanterns in the distance. If you're really feeling up to it, you can do those as well. But remember to reduce the brightness as you get further away, reduce the brightness, reduce the intensity because you get less light. And effectively as the, double, as the distance doubles, the amount of light received by the camera, by your eye is, is reduced by four, four times. So you just sort of have to work that away as you go further away. So, um, yeah, hopefully, I'm just going to bring the brightness down just a little bit, not, not too much. just want to find that balance point there, which is 0.55 there. So hopefully you've, um, oh, there we go. You've, you've seen how you can restore, um, in essence, let me just reset this one here. So that's the image we had. I thought we probably lost it, probably couldn't do anything with that. And then with a little bit of work, um, we can create something. These lights are a little bit bright. I probably just going to go back into the masks here and just bring them down just a little bit. So they're a little bit bright, a little bit, uh, a little bit too bright. Yeah. So hopefully that's been helpful. Um, you've seen how you can recover something that you thought you may have lost. Um, have a play with the, uh, with the ideas of using the day to night and uh, adding the, the, the sky in. Um, and you can, you know, have some fun, which is what it's all about at the end of the day. So as I say, in, in the link down below, there is, a, there is a, a link to allow you to download this RAW. Have a play with it. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comments below. Um, if you, if you like what we were doing here, please like the video, that, that would be great. And if you like what I'm doing on YouTube, um, please, please feel free to subscribe. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So um, goodbye for now.